What was I going to talk about? I mean, I know I watched a movie recently, but what was it called? All right, all right, I, I know that's cheesy, but Forgotten Love is a Polish period drama on Netflix that takes the idea of amnesia and weaves a touching story with it. A respected surgeon and professor is abandoned by his wife, who also takes their daughter, and one night, after a bout of heavy drinking, he falls victim to a mugging and, as a result, loses his memory. Now, the film opens with some beautiful and patient cinematography as we watch a surgeon performing a procedure. The camera pans around the surgeon in just this slow arc, allowing us to see his concentration, but also his kindness and care for the patient. And this sets the stage for the character that we're going to follow through the majority of the movie. We find out Rafal, the surgeon, is brilliant, and he's one of the best in his field. He works at a fancy clinic, and he has a good amount of wealth, judging by his home, his belongings, and the house staff. He's also married with a daughter, but the wife isn't in love with him. So one day, she leaves and takes the daughter with her. So out of despair, Rafal just goes on a bender and ends up being attacked in the street, but then isn't found the next day. Only his bloody jacket remained. Now, everybody believes he's died, but then in an abrupt and even jarring moment of storytelling, the movie jumps forward 15 years to where we see Rafal, looking like a beggar, roaming the countryside without any knowledge of who he is or even what he was. We also get to see his daughter, who's now in her early 20s, looking to find some work in a small town that's overseen and not necessarily ruled, but, you know, influenced by this count and countess. This drama is a couple of love stories mixed with the story convenience that the surgeon and his daughter are going to eventually cross paths, but neither knows the other, so they can't have a reunion. The movie's two hours and 20 minutes, so it's not a quick watch, and the pacing is slower to allow us to become invested in each of the characters through careful development and character building depth. Now, the cinematography that I mentioned, it was excellent at the beginning. It also continues throughout the film, capturing the scope of many of the surroundings in order to just provide scale. I mean, we're shown the excessively large front lawn of the Count's mansion, dwarfing the daughter as she walks down the grass. And then there are spectacular countryside views that create this sense of loneliness, but also peaceful beauty. But this isn't just limited to exterior shots. I mean, we're given intimate views of the characters, which allow us to see the depth of their emotions without being so up close that it becomes awkward or intrusive. Now, the visuals are just enveloping and great to see. The progression of the story, it works to craft a moving tale that includes romance, excitement, devastation, and mystery. Not every aspect is exceptionally told, though. There's a story arc that's minor, but it's also necessary that involves the surgeon, his former colleague, and his present circumstances. Now, we can work out some of the nuances and the tension, but there comes a point towards the end that feels almost like it's just forgotten in lieu of focusing on another aspect of the story. Now, this isn't anything major, but there is an injustice portion that goes unaddressed. Now, there's also a point where Rafal performs a pretty harrowing procedure. Personally, I'd love to know what he was actually doing because what it looked like was going on actually wasn't. So I am curious about how he was healing somebody. Now, again, it's not a big deal to the story. This is one of those things that I wished I had been given more detail on. And then one resolution in particular, it does feel rushed and overly convenient, even though some of the arc has been moving towards this conclusion. No, I don't mind the convenience because it helps to provide a more positive and uplifting end to the story rather than one that just could be seen as more grounded or real. I love that all the way through this story, we see Rafal being a compassionate and cheerworthy character. He's got a huge heart, and even when he has zero clue as to how he knows how to help treat people's ailments, he does so willingly and for free. He's also got a ton of honor, choosing others over himself and sometimes putting himself into predicaments that are unfair to him, but they will benefit somebody else. Now, I was really drawn to Rafal and his actions. I mean, his demeanor is quiet and patient, and he's typically the smartest guy in the room, but he doesn't ever say it, just illustrating his humility. There is some slight humor that's interspersed throughout the story, but it's not in the form of jokes, just natural interactions that are humorous and lighthearted. And this helps balance out some of the downtrodden feelings that come about just thanks to the financially depressed nature of the village and the surroundings. Now, both of the love story aspects that are focused on, they don't feel too rushed, and they become believable relationships that we want to root for versus mismatched people that just exude dysfunction. I think a lot of the progression, though, with the love stories is obvious, so it could be not as effective for everyone. For me, though, that didn't take away from the enjoyment. And because the characters are worth rooting for, I was cheering on their success as couples, despite the hardships that are thrust into their paths. 
Now, overall, Forgotten Love is a beautiful story, focusing on love that inspires and heals. The cinematography is stunning, capturing visuals that transport us into the peaceful beauty of the country and allow us to eavesdrop on private conversations. While there are some story elements that are overly predictable, left unaddressed, or helped by large plot conveniences, the narrative as a whole is uplifting and rewarding. The storytelling is slow and even meanders at times, but the audience is rewarded with a loving conclusion full of redemption. There's some sex, brief nudity, some profanity, and then some violence. I give Forgotten Love four out of five couches. So what's a good love story you've seen recently? Anything you can recommend to me in the comments below? If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.